On the other side of the market, the Baird Report found that strategic acquirers, mostly large public companies or family-backed private companies, accounted for nearly two-thirds of distribution deals with a reported value of more than $100 million since 2005. Many strategic buyers have returned to or stepped up their use of consolidation as a growth vehicle. For example, Granger has made acquisitions in the past few years to expand its specialty brands portfolio, broaden its services, and to grow globally. Motion Industries, a power transmission product distributor, has grown geographically and has expanded its reach in industrial supplies through a series of acquisitions. Other recent strategic deals include DGI Supplies Acquisition of Midwest Industrial Tools, an Omaha-based two-branch industrial distributor, Wesco's Acquisition of Rico, a $25 million electrical distributor, Purvis Industries Acquisition of Bearing Solutions, Purvis has also made previous acquisitions of power transmission and bearing distributors, and Interline Brands Acquisition of Northern Colorado Paper. Lincoln International's Kurt Tatham says large public strategic buyers are driven by growth expectations and high cash balances. And then you have the, the strategics who for so long, obviously during the downturn, were focused on, frankly, reducing expenses and managing their own businesses. There was a bunker mentality there for quite some time. and. Now they're much more focused on top-line growth. Last year, profits grew, but it was primarily driven by operating leverage that had been created during the downturn through expense reductions. The top lines obviously did be begin to come back last year, but when you look at where some of these public companies are valued right now, there's you know clearly a, an expectation that the top line is going to come back, and it probably needs to for the stock prices to be maintained. So. They're looking for ways to augment their internal growth, um, and obviously acquisitions is a way they can do that. There are 419 non-financial companies in the S&P 500, and at the third, in the third quarter of 2010, the amount of cash they were sitting, up, sitting on was up 49% versus three years ago, okay. while total debt was only up just 14%. So uh, that's you know 35% increase in their net, net cash position. So they're going to be looking for opportunities. Back to private equity firm activity and distribution, which is driving consolidation in the middle market. Private equity firms are economic buyers looking for a high rate of return on their investments. They all have different models of doing so, but all will hold the company for a period of time and then sell it to another private equity firm with a different focus or to a strategic buyer. Some in the past have sold the companies through an IPO. According to the Baird Report, financial sponsor activity picked up in 2010, with 7 of 13 $100 million plus deals involving private equity buyers. Jason Kluwer, a member of Baird's distribution team, explained why private equity is interested in distribution. You know, distribution does well through the cycle, as the report shows that you know, distributors generated you know, record cash flow in 2009, cash flow up over 30%, whereas EBITDA was down 30%. You know, while you can't sustain a business by decreasing working capital and, and essentially using that to generate cash, uh, in the short term it's helpful from a, a lender's perspective because you know very few distributors actually got into serious financial difficulty through the downturn. Some have a lot of leverage, and even some of the very levered distributors managed to uh, to make it through the downturn as they continue to generate cash to, to meet interest re expense requirements. So I think the combination of um, the fact that its distribution is an asset class that, that lenders understand and that has good uh, financial characteristics to, uh, to put leverage on a business. And then, you know, number two, the fact that a lot of private equity firms are looking for ways to improve a business when they make an investment. In, in distribution tends to offer a lot of ways to do that. You can do that through acquisitions. The sector is still highly fragmented, and a lot of sponsors will invest in a platform with the strategy of, of going after, you know, often more aggressively some of the targets that the, the company may have been in discussions with for years but have, had not yet kind of completed those transactions. There's new geographies. There is, you know, sourcing from Asia. There's new investments in IT. There's just a lot of levers you can pull in distribution uh, to, to grow the top line as well as to control costs. And that appeals to a, a wide range of sponsors looking to, uh, looking to make an investment in distribution. Platform businesses are most attractive to these firms. Platform characteristics include breadth and depth of the corporate and branch management team, IT systems, value-added services, defensible market position, scalability, and diversity of customer and supplier base. Kurt Tatham comments on this trend. Either regional players trying to develop 
uh, a national footprint or even sub-regional companies trying to become regional platforms. There's a lot of that going on. And some of that is just driven by the relative size of the companies because there's multiple arbitrage opportunities for the larger companies to buy smaller companies and then ultimately trade at a higher multiple themselves. Um, in addition, obviously, the, the synergy opportunities that, that exist with distributors. We saw last year you know, a number of private equity groups starting new platforms or, or they were previously announced platforms where they're getting their first deals done. So Blackhawk industrial distribution, which is the Brazos-backed entity. And they, they had announced they're backing Bill Scheller for quite some time, but they got the Duncan deal done, and then they they got another deal, smaller deal done here recently. Yeah. Audex acquired Distribution International. Freeman Spogli acquired you know, Brooks. Pritzker Group acquired Impact Products. So there were, there were a number of um, new pe bag platforms out there as well. Jim Miller says platform companies are attractive in part due to the amount of capital a firm is able to deploy in one transaction. For the platform companies, those are the opportunities. Those are typically your bigger deals, right? That's You have an opportunity to deploy a much more significant amount of that uninvested equity capital. And, you know, so you have a true, you know, sizable platform, and it is a feeding frenzy right now. Size, again, is one of the, the primary factors because, again, there is at least a half a trillion dollars of dry powder sitting on the sideline. Being able to deploy that, that dry powder, if, if you have an opportunity to deploy 100 or 200 million of it in one transaction versus deploying 10 million of it you know, in 10 transactions or in 20 transactions, those are the deals that are really getting the private equity funds attention. And those middle market deals that are getting you know, a lot of strategic buyer attention as well, because you're getting into that, you know, it's a nice size range, it's a demonstrated platform, but it's also not so big that they'd be betting the farm. It's actually where we see things the hottest right now is in that middle market that fits like a glove with both private equity and strategic buyer universe. Many of these private equity firms are selling and buying companies, which should also drive demand, according to Miller. They are actually driving a significant amount of both supply and demand, is the, is the private equity funds themselves, who, if you look at the time periods when those investments were made, you know, several of those platform investments that were made in 2006, 2007, 2008, you know, I will be surprised if, you know, the majority of those companies, they don't at least test the market on those companies before the end of 2012. The smaller end of the market is ripe for acquisitions as many struggle to support growth as demand picks up. Jason Kluwer says Baird has seen a lot of activity in this area. We're seeing a lot of activity on the very small side okay. um, as, uh, in many cases, private equity-backed distributors are buying, you know, smaller businesses. You know, we think that a lot of these mom and pops, as you might call them, uh, survive the downturn by doing what I just mentioned, by reducing uh, working capital to generate cash. Whereas now as we head into the upswing of the cycle and we're seeing strong earnings growth forecasts for, um, you know, for the industrial distributors that we follow, and you know, if you look at Manthe's report, by sector, you can see you know, the expectation of growth in 11. Um, to fund that growth, you need to invest in working capital. And some of these smaller guys, having returned earnings back to sort of 08 levels and survived what was, for a lot of the smaller companies, a really tough time with layoffs and other things that they had to, to work through. The question is, do you go back to your lenders and try to continue to invest in the business, um, or do you think this is a better time to sell? And, in many cases, there's, there's more receptivity on the part of the smaller uh, industrial distributors to a sale. Uh, at the same time, there's private equity in the space. There's larger distri distributors looking for different ways to grow the top line. So I, I think we really we lost a couple years when there was so much uncertainty on future earnings, particularly in 2009, that M&A just kind of came to a standstill. Now there's just the natural exits as some of these owners uh, approach retirement and earnings are back to a level where it makes sense for them to think about an exit. That combined with the question of whether, you know, whether and how much additional financing they can get to support working capital investment. And then finally, the fact that the bigger getting bigger. I mean, there, there's more and more investment in IT. 
there's there's a bigger difference between a Granger in terms of their buying power, in terms of their sourcing uh, versus a mom and pop today than there might have been 10 years ago. So it's becoming more and more competitive, and all of that favors large distributors, and it, it can be a driver of M&A. Kurt Tatham says that many companies are more open to selling now. In 2008 and 2009, people saw their some of their competitors just go out of business. I think that was a fairly frightening experience for a lot of people. And so I think they thought, you know, if there's an opportunity to, to monetize the business, uh, take some chips off the table and, and avoid the, the unknown operating risks that exist in this world, <laughs> whether it's oil prices or Japanese earthquakes or Al-Qaeda or, you know, there's some things that, you know, you can manage your business, but there's certain things you just can't control. All of this activity we are seeing